namaste <clears throat> and onward we go the next question is what is zen and what is suffering how to get beyond the suffering okay well suffering is an attachment and an aversion to what's taking place now. Suffering happens when this I construct wants to cling to something, when it, when it feels lack, when it feels loss of control, when it feels that uh, something needs to be gained or something needs to be pushed away. And uh, the only permanent thing in the transient is change. Okay, so that's, that's number one. That's why suffering takes place, because we're under this illusion that we are this, uh, this object, and we are surrounded by objects and people that come and go, and we don't know the permanency of that. And so when we don't know the permanency of that, and we have adopted all of these uh, mistaken notions about who and what we are, they drive the mind, <clears throat> and the mind continues looping and it continues to bring and uh, continues to manufacture and hold to this suffering ego. Okay, and so the next part of that question was Zen. What is Zen? Okay, Zen is a Japanese word that is the same word as Chan is in Chinese. And it's the same word as jhana is in Hinduism, okay, in Sanskrit. And it simply means meditation, okay. Meditation or being contemplating on what is here in this now, okay. It's the simplicity of being fully embracing this now without adding to and without subtracting from. It's coming to a point of pure awareness. And when this pure awareness takes place, this muddy water that's being stirred by mind, as the mind begins to still, the water begins to slow down and it's circling. And the mud that's been stirred up by the mind and circling will eventually start to go to the bottom and more and more clarity comes and one begins to see in clarity without the stirred up maelstrom of mind stuff that's occluding what is there and what is always present. Uh, as, as many satsang sayers will, will say, there's nothing to get and nowhere to go because you're already that. Well, it's true, you can't get something that, that you already are. You are already that. The problem is not that it's something that is separate from you. The problem is it's being occluded. And it's occluded by this moving mind, which is creating, sustaining, and uh, forever keeping a transient duality in motion and in place, and the delusion of being a separate, uh, finite being. Okay. So the path is about Zen, about Gyan, about Chan, about finding that Tao, that absolute, this unchanging is, which has always been present, and without, there would be no life. Okay, so this is the path. This is the path. It's the internal journey. And the practices that are given, and it doesn't matter what the modality is, if it's a modality that is there to take one to realization, not to just substantiate a, a better thing uh, and a better dynamic in the transient, if it's there to take one to realization, then the practices given, no matter which the modality, whether you say it's Zen or you say it's Dian or you say it's Chan or you, it, it doesn't matter. They are in place to get you to connect with what is actually taking place and to sit with it, not run from it, to embrace it, to look at it, to see deeper than it, to get to the bottom of that, 
to feel it absolutely fully, completely, without projecting another story around it, to see really where it comes from, so that it can start to let be let loose of, and it can start to deconstruct. And one does this, this process uh, takes place where, of course, one usually begins with all the storyline drama. Okay, that's that's most natural. People are more uh, in in tune with and caught up in and, and revolving around the various soap operas of their lives and the uh, what ifs and all of that. Uh, but eventually, one starts to see that 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 is not where the uh, freedom is going to be. The freedom has to be finding out what is prior to ego and, and what is there um, beyond this ego illusion. Um, and, and so eventually one begins to, to uh, have a normal, a, a natural, a spontaneous self-inquiry that will rise at some point in the journey that will begin to look more deeply into the reality or the illusion of ego, and it will begin to deconstruct it until one finally falls away or implodes, whichever the, the uh, case may be, uh, into that unchanging absolute, that Tao, that, uh, you know, whether you want to say part of Brahman, whether you want to say absolute, whether you want to say God, whether you want to say life force, whether you want to say the ever-present is, whether you want to call it that void, which is full, whole, complete, whether you want to call it the one without a second, it doesn't matter what name, if you want to call it Allah, uh, it doesn't matter what the name is, but it's the same cognition. It's that same endpoint for all paths. And this is why once uh, realization is entered, all of this drama and these divisionary ideas are at an end. Absolutely. You see at that point that, that to say that male Consciousness is higher than female consciousness. Male body is higher than female body. This culture is better than that culture. This religion is better than that religion. All of this drama goes out the door because it all stems from one singular, indivisible is. And all religious persuasions all of the master teachers, all of the sat gurus are pointing in the same direction to try to remove the coverings. And as stated before, what happens unfortunately is when the founder goes, then people turn it into a religious persuasion and they start adding dogma and they start adding rules, they start adding regulations, they start trying to define it and box it up and, and make it into something um, other than what it was meant to be, which is a, a pathway to liberation. And so, again, this is why the reformers come, and this is why it's important to have a living teacher that is within the, the cognition and the living reality, within the consciousness of the unknowing beyond knowledge, a.k.a. realization, enlightenment, whichever you want to call it, you know. Um, that, that's an important thing if you are on the path to realization. If you're not on the path to realization and you just want to better things in the transient realm and you have, you have no, absolutely no desire to go beyond that to, to realization, to get off the wheel of karma, then you, it doesn't matter. You can have a, you know, a, a different type of guru that's only going, it's going to work with you for things in the transient realm that have to do only with duality. 
so so we'll we'll leave it at that. But um, thank you for your question. So let's uh, understand that whether it's Zen, whether it's called Chan, whether it's called Yang, the way forward is into being fully in the moment, into a moving meditation or a still meditation, to be in that pure awareness, to allow the mind to burn itself out, to allow the mind to still, to allow the muddy waters to still so that the mud has a chance to go back down so that the clarity of the water is seen and known for what it is, okay? Rather than just seeing the moving mind of thoughts and all the stories and projections that that carries with it in its wake. So enjoy the journey and thank you for your question. Namaste.